Thank you so much. And so we are we are we are running late and uh, we will first move on with uh, the part of the program of the agenda about namescom in english language and so we will now switch to english we'll switch to english um, and we will uh, immediately start talking about namescon um, Namescon is a domain or domain industry conference that uh, OP3FT um, uh, participated in a uh, few days ago, a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, it, Namescon was the second uh, conference of its kind. Uh, Namescon 2014 was the, the first event. And the 2015 event uh, was a tremendous success. Uh, there were m in excess of 900 participants compared to around 450 the previous year, so twice as many participants. And uh, a very well organized uh, event that uh, we were fortunate enough to attend in uh, Las Vegas uh, in the US of A, and uh, an event which uh, helped us understand the dynamics of an industry that's not very well known and that uh, is centered around uh, building the value of addresses, uh, web addresses and domain names, building that value up through either content or the address itself uh, so that uh, this um, there's a, a whole industry that's surfaced around this. Um, so uh, we attended NamesCon and we did so with a great deal of help from uh, a team of very, very uh, competent people led by Jothan Frakes, whom we're very fortunate uh, to have with us tonight. Uh, I believe, Jothan, you're online. Can you hear me? You will in a minute when we've dialed up. Hello. Hi, Jothan. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Fantastic. This is Stefan. Thanks for joining us for the uh, Frogans Technology Conference number three. Uh, and I've just been introducing the Namescon concept to our audience here in Paris. Um, if um, Can you just explain a little bit more about Namescon? I, I, I've said that uh, the, uh, the Namescon 2015 event that we attended was the second event of its kind, but I think it's of interest to the people here to understand a little bit more about who attends these conferences and uh, who these conferences are aimed at. Of course, and uh, thank you for the privilege of participating in your event uh, as well. Uh, and we were delighted to have your um, to have your your speakers participating at the event. Um, are, is everyone able to hear me just fine? Yes, we can hear you fine, Jonathan. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. So the event uh, it takes place annually in Las Vegas, and it's designed around helping to expand awareness of domain names to people who, you know, f are within the industry, but also to share. Jonathan, no uh, you're back. We, we lost you for a minute. Can you hear me? I, I can, yes. You Perfect. know, I'm streaming, your, I'm streaming your event. Let me turn that off. Maybe that will help. Are you able to see me now? Yes, we can see okay. you and hear you perfectly. Yeah, as much as I'd be delighted to be there in person, I absolutely love France. And uh, um, yes, yeah, so the... The uh, purpose of NamesCon is to help expand awareness and help people build and uh, deliver the utility of domain names. It's a gathering of the industry, uh, and then it allows people who are interested parties in the, in the industry, whether they are uh, buyers of domain names, website developers, or uh, are otherwise interested in domain names. Uh, with the new TLDs coming out, uh, such as Doc Brogan's and, and many of the others, there is a big 
difference between uh, the classical use of a .com name or uh, websites that they're used to because of the, the, the new naming. And we wanted to make a available a, a way for people to, to learn about these new TLDs in a way that would help them to understand and, and perhaps see some of the opportunities and then be able to leverage those opportunities and actually talk with the people who run those registries. Um, and and I'll, I'll come back to Doc Frogan's because it's one of the more innovative uh, uses of a top-level domain that I've seen. And I was delighted that you could participate uh, in the NamesCon and get information about Doc Frogan's out to the audience. I, I saw that it was very well received. And we were absolutely delighted to be there as well and, and interact with people that, uh, um, uh, the people that we call domainers, uh, as you've said, domain investors, people that will invest time and money developing this virtual real estate. Um, it, it's, it may sound relatively strange for some of our uh, audience that, uh, that there is actually a business that sprung around developing web addresses. Um, it, can you explain, is this a relatively new thing or has this been happening for a while? Can you just give us some insight into, into that industry for people that, that today or tonight uh, watching you uh, will discover this whole different side to the domain name business? Yeah, um, and, and there's a variety of different angles, so I'll, I'll make it as concise as, as I can. There's a... Within the domain name space, because it's a very mature market, uh, VeriSign is celebrating the 30th anniversary of .com uh, currently. And as, as many will see, as you go into neighborhoods to buy a home, um, quite often you're not going into where there's brand new homes. You're going into a secondary market where you're buying existing homes or apartments and uh, it, it, you, what comes with those is the history of those, and, and in some cases, you've got some very selective and fantastic addresses. You know, I would say that uh, you know a home with a beautiful view of, of the Eiffel Tower would be very, very valuable, uh, especially if it's right on the river, and that's going to be far more valuable than you know perhaps a house that's further out in uh, away from the city. Um, but but each is a home and each is wonderful, but the values of these are very similar in the domain space. There are domain names that sell now for millions of dollars. Um, and, and part of the, the attractiveness of that is what the name is and how it's used and how it's developed. And there's a huge industry around this. There are escrow providers, there are appraisers, there are um, whole marketplaces where these names exchange hands in very uh, high dollar uh, transactions. It's always about finding the right name for the right project, and it creates a price. Uh, it creates people who are very insensitive to the price to get the right name to use what they're going to do. Now, what excited uh, our audience about Frogans and the technology there is these are people who are entrepreneur entrepreneurial minded. They're folks who do work from their homes. Uh, this is a second income that they're trying to turn into a primary income and and to work from their homes and enjoy more time with their families, enjoy a uh, better quality of living um, through doing something that's a passion. And they're always keen to find a way to activate that passion in a way that can help feed the family and keep a roof over their head. Very simple fundaments, but uh, with respect to programs, it's very exciting because the technology, it's, it's at the front end of a very exciting technology that has such a, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right words for this. You, you develop in one place and then it works across devices. So no longer do you have to spend as much time developing your concepts or your sites. You can be creative in a very specific and, and simple way and then enjoy the benefit of that and it's very, very compatible backward with technologies that may be in emerging countries and emerging nations. Uh, a lot of folks were focused on China, Africa, many developing nations where the technology is a barrier to, um, 
to being able to access those audiences. And the Frogan's technology had a lot of keen interest because it is a way that these people can enact these opportunities and reach a really large global market. Thanks, Jonathan. So a lot of excitement. Yeah. Sorry. So is it fair to say, in, in, uh, with the feedback that you had after the conference, perhaps, uh, that there was keen interest uh, in this new technology uh, that we're developing in terms of um, the ease with which Frogan sites will be used uh, will be able to be used, and the fact that these addresses, these, as you said, truly international, truly multi-platform, uh, do you feel that these uh, people who have a very keen uh, interest and a, a high level of knowledge of the uh, domain industry so far, love the cup, um, do, you, do you feel that they've got... Um, uh, they, they, there's a, a new potential out there with the Frogan's addresses. What was the feedback you got? What we have in our audience is people who are really empirical. Like once they get excited about something, they really want to get their hands into it and work with it. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, interest that unfolds on this because they were just, you know, plain out unaware. A lot of the mindset is is very similar to. Uh, everything equals .com, and these are variations on .com. .frogans is such an innovative use of the domain name space that uh, they love the fact that they can come in and they're at the, the bleeding edge of uh, the very start, the inception of something that has this power. I think that they're going to do a lot with this. You know, and it's ultimately going to play out uh, in how, um, you know, the technical manuals will help how many software development toolkits will be available? Um, these are things, though, that that you've got a technically sophisticated group of people who are going to be very interested in in building the next generation of websites and opportunities. Um, I look at Frogans, who have had the, um, I would say, patience and uh, durability to have, um, you know, gone through the process of applying for the Dot Frogans namespace for this. Uh, it, it, and it's clear that that's the kind of support that is going to be necessary to start this, not only this new standard, but to really break ground in the way that you're doing. I think people really recognize that uh, by, by having as many people at NamesCon and the presence that you had and the ability to present the, the platform. Ultimately, I, I have a very favorable uh, opinion of the Frogan's platform. I love to see innovation in the namespace. And I think, uh, you know, from what I'm seeing already, there's a lot of potential on this platform. Jonathan, thanks very much. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. I want to thank you once again for both helping us through NamesCon and being with us tonight. And I hope uh, at the next uh, Frogan's Technology Conference, you'll be here in person. Uh, we'll rent you that uh, room with a view of the Eiffel Tower. Um, <laughs> and as I don't control the budget, I can make those kinds of promises. <laughs> thank you very much, Jonathan. See you thank soon. You. So we will uh, continue this uh, discussion of the domain industry with um, another participant that we, we met at NamesCon. We, we had, uh, um, it was really an eye-opener as, as an event. Uh, one of the interesting aspects of the event was a domain name auction that we uh, took. Uh, well, we didn't, we didn't participate in it, but we observed it. We were uh, a part of the audience for that auction and it really does show that there's an extremely dynamic market for these web addresses uh, and it's a, a market that we hope um, to see also that that dynamism uh, we hope to also see in the uh, with the Frogan's technology so we'll now switch to um, Claude Dowman uh, Claude you can you can hear us? Yes. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Hi. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Claude, perhaps I can just uh, first of all ask you to quickly introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do, and then uh, uh, kick in with a few questions. Oh, of course. Thank you. Uh, my name is Claude Dowman, and uh, I am the uh, president of Domains 90210, 
Uh, and uh, we are an online marketing company. Uh, we have a portfolio of uh, approximately 1,600 uh, domain names. And uh, we've been involved in the uh, online space since 1996, having launched our first online businesses back then out of a uh, co-op in New York City. And uh, one of them grew to be a leader in its field. It was a uh, uh, online designer swimwear website. And we sold, uh, we started with two brands and we grew and eventually we had 30 of the top designer brands and we shipped all over the world. And uh, we had a very unusual at the time uh, inventory on demand business model so that uh, we operated out of eventually out of an office in uh, uh, near downtown Los Angeles. And uh, but we were able to have a virtual multi million dollar inventory and the merchandise would come to our businesses on a on a regular basis and we would ship it out the same day to our customers. And uh, that uh, business I sold in 2010 and since then have been focused almost entirely on the uh, domain name space uh, with a great emphasis on the .tv extension, uh, which uh, we've done very well with. And uh, uh, I, believe, uh, I believe in the extension for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the most important is that uh, uh, the, uh, the abbreviation TV uh, has been around since well before the internet and it's recognized among almost every language, uh, regardless of the character set. Uh, TV denotes television and video is so important. So uh, that's, uh, that's a big part of what we do. And uh, I am a, uh, I love music and I write music as well, but that's just a, a passion and a uh, hobby. But I spend most of my time working and, uh, and enjoy very much what, uh, what I'm doing. Thanks, Flo. Just to explain to people in the audience here or listening to us online that may be unfamiliar with the business of domaining, um, you buy and sell addresses that you develop as virtual real estate. Is that a fair summary of, of what you're doing? Yes, that's a very good summary. Uh, having 1,600 domain names uh, makes it a, uh, a quite an extensive process of developing. But we have been developing at a, uh, at a good clip, and uh, we have a number of uh, uh, e-commerce sites that are built on affiliations with companies like Amazon so that we can uh, do the creative work and the marketing work and try to build a better mousetrap, try to focus on a specific niche and make it very easy to shop within that niche. And then when the customer decides to purchase uh, Amazon or wh whomever it might be, does the heavy lifting and handles all the customer service, order fulfillment, logistics, uh, returns and all of that. So. Um, we have a number of sites. May I mention one or two? Or of course. Would it, I don't want to be a shameless uh, self-promoter, but uh, one of our more successful sites is leather.tv, and we have a wide variety of very high-quality leather goods from uh, accessories, handbags, shoes, jackets, dresses, all the way to equestrian gear, like beautiful saddles, and, um, and that site does well. We have a very high fashion site, which we launched recently. And for me, it was really something because I sold the swimwear business in 2010. And up until then, I haven't touched fashion. And I thought that I didn't miss the fashion business. But as soon as I started looking for styles for BEE.TV and, uh, and uh, putting together the product uh, selection, uh, when I started doing that, I realized how much I really love and miss that business. And I guess after about 14 years in the fashion business with the swimwear site, uh, you know, I built up a very powerful skill set in understanding the consumer habits, especially with regards to uh, uh, women's apparel. So BEE.TV is another site. And then we have a uh, site which I think is maybe a precursor uh, to the uh, uh, Frogan's technology, which obviously this is very different, but it's a very simple news site. It's a QNB, 
uh, Queen Nancy Boy for Quick News Blog uh, TV. And basically, it's all the news, all the headlines updated uh, instantaneously, but with no pictures, uh, no videos. It loads very quickly, and it's really meant to just get you the news quickly from your mobile phone or from your computer and, uh, and make it very easy. And it links directly into the news sources. Uh, but uh, so, so we have a variety of uh, different websites. Thanks, Claude. So if we can move on to the Frogan's technology, which you've uh, just mentioned, uh, and uh, just ask you what your initial reaction to the technology is. Do you, you are a, a true domain expert and professional. You, you work, develop, uh, use domains every day. What are, what, is your, what are your thoughts on the technology itself, its potential? Uh, how does the technology uh, impact someone like yourself that has a keen understanding of the existing industry? Thank you, that's a great question. Well, as Ronald Reagan once said, tear down this wall. And I think that's so important. Uh, when I started uh, my business in 96, it was the kind of climate where somebody could start a business in their apartment, in their home, in their co-op, and have it grow to be a leader in the field. Uh, when I started my business, uh, the uh, search engine with the very colorful logo uh, didn't even exist. And I remember one day when I was submitting to search engines, all of a sudden, there was this new search engine with a great logo. And I kind of knew that they were gonna be special. And they were the friendly people that didn't charge, didn't take any advertising, gave you the best results. And they really did. And it didn't matter if you were a $200 million company or a startup, if people liked you and you did well, you'd be at the top of the results. And we did very well, uh, positions one through three for some of the most important terms in swimwear, including swimwear and swimsuits. Uh, today, that has changed significantly. And uh, so if, if you're not um, a larger company, it seems like the results are skewed towards big business today. And I think that that is a great disservice, not only to the entrepreneurs, but to the people who are on the internet, because the highest and best use of the internet is, and when I first started my, my online business in 96, I spent countless hours thinking, what goods and services could I bring to people that they wouldn't have easy access to? So if the internet has now become a place where if you search, you find the biggest conglomerates at the top of the results, it does you very little good because they're all around you anyway. What you really want to find is you want to find the niche boutiques. You want to find the sources of information that are rather unique and, and not just the, uh, the major press. Uh, and uh, I think that um, in fashion, we have 20 year cycles. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the next generation growing up with their parents, looking, behaving a certain way, trying to emulate that once they get past the adolescent rebellion period. And uh, so uh, I think that the internet may have the same kind of 20 year cycle if we're lucky. And uh, I think that uh, what your technology really is a great step towards that. And uh, so I think that uh, eventually the people have more power than we ever really imagined. You know, we, we choose who we decide to search with uh, we choose which sites we decide to go to. But I do hope that things do change in a way that um, the Internet once again can empower the individuals uh, without the advertising budgets, uh, but with the great ideas and the services and the goods that um, people might really appreciate but might not have uh, easy access to. Thanks very much, Claude. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. And I want to thank you once again for being with us and sharing some of that fascinating insight. Hopefully, oh. we will be able to speak uh, again very soon at one of the forthcoming Frogan's Technology Conferences. So, Claude, thank you very much. Thank you. An honor to participate. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thank 
So we've heard from a, a, a true domain expert, a true domain professional. We'll now call Scott Smith, uh, founder of the uh, UB Names Corporation, just for our, our last uh, look at uh, this industry that's grown around uh, internet addresses and that is a logical segue into the Frogan's technology. Um, and uh, once again, as part of the OP3FT's outreach efforts, uh, we are fascinated by uh, some of these events that we go to uh, where we discover uh, new ecosystems and new ways of thinking about uh, the internet, uh, what we just heard from Claude in terms of um, uh, not uh, being able to, when you're a, a smaller player, uh, an entrepreneur, a small company, not being able to access certain things uh, that larger corporations have have access to, and I think that is part of the philosophy of the Frogan's technology as well. So um, if uh, Scott is on the line, we'll uh, uh, switch to, to Scott now. Scott, uh, welcome. Thank you for being with us today uh, and taking part in the uh, Frogan's technology conference number three. Can I very uh, quickly jump in and ask you uh, to introduce yourself to our audience and tell us uh, what UB Names does, please. All right, well, first of all, thank you for, uh, for having me. Uh, we did have a chance to uh, meet at NamesCon, and it was uh, great to see the initial, technology, the initial uh, part of what you folks are doing uh, at Progans, and uh, it was very fascinating. Um, my background is I am now the uh, CEO and founder, co-founder of UB Names Corporation. And UB Names is the first registrar for a company out of Washington, D.C. and uh, San Francisco called the Wireless Registry. And very simply, the Wireless Registry has also created some very uh, new technology that really kind of parallels what um, Frogans is doing in that it's not a domain space per se, but they have created what we have called wireless names. And they have had a technology that allows you to um, create a name and to do some many things with that. And it really does have to go around with the explosion of the internet of things. And this is where devices are talking to devices. And depending on whose numbers you want to believe, uh, Cisco and other people in the space will say that there's going to be 40, 50 billion devices talking to each other within the next uh, few years. That said, with all of these devices that need to talk to each other, right now there is no naming convention for those devices. So typically these devices will have a MAC address and a Bluetooth address or what have you, uh, especially beacon technology which is exploding. Um, these devices will talk to each other, but until this time, you weren't able to associate attributes and content to those names. So quite simply, the wireless registry will, or UB names, you'll be able to go to UB names and to register a name. You'll be able to then take the MAC address of any device that you have, whether it be a phone, tablet, watch, Google Glass, any of the other technologies, you'll be able to associate the name with that device, and then through our dashboard, you'll be able to go in there and add content to it. So you could have uh, public or private information. You can uh, add things like text, videos, pictures, links to YouTube, links to your URLs, websites, etc. So it's very fascinating technology and very much like Frogan's and what Jothan said earlier, it's very much sort of leading or leading edge. And that's what fascinated me about um, the Frogan's technology. Thanks very much, Scott. So um, you found the technology fascinating. I understand that you're actually uh, ready to take the next step and get even more involved. Can you tell us what you see as uh, a potential development for your business through the Frogan's technology? Why, why the interest? Well, um, I have a, uh, a long association in the domain business, so I've been a domainer for a long time. And as Jonathan said earlier, there's an awful lot of very sharp entrepreneurial people in the business. And I've learned quite a bit from those people. And you know how I got involved in the wireless registry is that many uh, months ago, uh, you were able to get wireless names for free. 
Well, I jumped on the bandwagon and started to register quite a few of them. And back and forth, they suggested, well, why don't you become a registrar? You seem to have a bit of a grasp on what's happening. So as this new technology is being uh, implemented and deployed, I see the potential with a Frogan's uh, association or affiliation to perhaps um, work together in, uh, in deploying these new technologies. There may be situations where UB names and Frogan's names may, may coexist in some fashion. So it's very early in the game, uh, but I do see some potential down the road, and I think it would be uh, you know, quite interesting to, to pursue that. So you're looking at becoming a, an account administrator for the, the Frogan's Core Registry. Uh, is that correct? That's correct. I'm, I'm intrigued by the network uh, name part of the equation, a um, little less so than the public and the, um, the intranet portion of it. Um, I think you'll find many domainers uh, will certainly take up the network uh, naming part of the equation uh, with the Frogan's addresses. That's interesting, and thanks for uh, indulging me in that little scoop that I wanted to give the audience there. But uh, it's an interesting take on and the way the addresses work. You're looking at one specific type of address, the network address. Um, that's obviously something that's it's not easy to do with existing domain names. So um, there you're looking at using the technology to do something that hasn't been done before. Is that correct? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And the fact that the, the wireless registry has got uh, a substantial number of patents on this, um, it, it's again, it's not overlaying an internet layer. It's, it's totally removed. But again, because of the newness and, and other, other factors, I think that there's some parallels with Frogan's technology. Scott, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you this evening, and uh, we hope to do so again very soon at one of our other uh, conferences. Thank you for being with us. I just wanted to also say that uh, Jothan did a wonderful job as well the explaining NamesCon, and should we also work together, I'd like a hotel room next to him on the Seine. <laughs> Sure, no problem. I, I'm in a very generous <laughs> mood today, so you can, you can have the suite. Cheers. There we are. That's it for our um, uh, little spot on NamesCon this evening. I will now uh, switch back to French and uh, not, unfortunately, leave, leave any room for questions as we are a bit behind schedule, um, but uh, um, there will be plenty of opportunity to interact with our domain professionals through our existing channels.